My name is Jens Bergensten, but I'm better known as Jeb. I'm the lead developer of Minecraft here at Mojang in Stockholm. I think I was 11 or maybe 12, and I started uh, programming because I wanted to make games, and one of my father's friends told me that in order to make games, you need to learn to how to program. So, that, so that's how I got started. I, I like designing and figure out, figuring out the architecture of, of things. That's what, what I really like about Minecraft. Over the next hour, you're going to learn the basics of computer science by programming Alex or Steve to move through a simulated piece of a Minecraft world. Traditional programming is usually in text, but today we'll use Blockly, a system which uses visual blocks that you can drag and drop to write programs. Under the hood, you're creating JavaScript code. The concepts that you'll be learning are what computer programmers use every day and are the foundation to computer science. Here at Mojang, we use these same concepts to make Minecraft work. Before you start, you'll pick your character. I'm going to choose Alex. Let's build code for a program that will help her move around the screen. Your screen is split into three main parts. On the left is the Minecraft play space, where your program will run. The instructions for each level are written below. This middle area is the toolbox and each of these blocks is a command that directs Alex's actions. The white space on the right is called the workspace and this is where we'll build our program. If we drag the move forward block to our workspace and then click run, what happens? Alex moves forward one space on the grid. And what if we wanted to do something after she moves forward one space? We can add another block to our program. I'm going to choose the turn right block and I'll drag it underneath my move block until this orange line appears. Then I'll drop it and the two blocks will snap together. When we press run again, Alex will perform the commands that are stacked from top to bottom in our workspace. And if you ever want to delete a block, just drag it from the stack back to the toolbox. To undo your changes and get back to how the level started, use the start over button in the top right corner of the workspace. One more thing. You see the little triangle on the turn blocks? Anytime you see these triangles, it means that you can pick a different option. Let's start coding.
I'm Lydia Winters, Moying's brand director, and we made a little game called Minecraft. My favorite thing to do in Minecraft is to explore. I love adventuring in caves and seeing what I can find. As someone who isn't a programmer, I'm really excited to go through the Minecraft lessons and actually learn some coding myself. The last level needed lots of move forward blocks. It would be easier if we could just tell the computer to perform the move forward command four or five times. Luckily for us, computers are really good at repeating commands with repeat loops. When building Minecraft, we use repeat loops to place all the initial materials for creating a new world. That's thousands and thousands of blocks. We also use loops in little ways. For example, to make Alex's feet move back and forth as she walks. Repeat loops are a powerful part of programming. Night is coming, so in the next couple of levels, we're going to build a house to stay safe. We're going to use the repeat block to do this very easily. To build a wall of our house, we can either tell Alex to move forward and place planks four times, or we can tell her to move forward and place one plank that takes this command and use the repeat block to have her perform the action multiple times. Now we'll click on the repeat block and tell her how many times we want her to perform this action. Now let's build our house before night falls. Have fun!
Now we're going to learn about if statements. If statements are a fundamental part of learning to program. They help a computer make decisions. All computers use if statements, including my phone. For example, when I unlock my phone, it runs some code that says, if I enter the password correctly, then unlock the phone. Otherwise, it shows an error message. You can use if statements in your code to make Steve and Alex react to what they see in the world. For example, if there is a rock in front of them, they can turn left or turn right if they run into a tree. In this case, we don't want to fall in the lava. It's easy to plan for the lava. We can see it on the screen, but what about the lava we can't see under the stone? After we mine the stone, we'll need to check if there's any lava in that place before moving forward. If there is lava there, we want to place a stone in front of our character before we can move forward. That way, we can safely move on. Time for more mining, and remember to use the if statement to watch your step.
Congratulations! You just learned the basic building blocks of computer science. Now you can use these blocks to build your own creation. There are no more instructions and no puzzles to solve. You can build anything you want. You get to choose. Oh, 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 it, it's about to get real. Put a shear. Oh, 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 oh. I made an L out of torches. I made an A out of birch planks. It worked, it worked well forwards. We built a house out of wool. Now you can build whatever you want. Have, Have fun. fun. Thank you.